Hi YouTube, back to basic scale here again. Today I'm going to show you how to make homemade yeast. I think this is kind of an important thing to have an idea of what we need to, uh, to do to make some uh, for the just in case scenario. Anyway, uh, you're going to need a potato that's large enough to make one cup of potato, mashed potatoes. Uh, if you need to use two small ones, that's fine. Three small ones, whatever you have to make one cup of mashed potatoes in the end um, is what you'll need. Uh, three tablesp tablespoons of dry yeast. Uh, do not buy rapid rise yeast. It will not work. You're going to have to um, find the act just active dry yeast. You're going to need a teaspoon of ginger powder. You're going to need a half cup of flour, two cups of cornmeal, and a half a cup of uh, sugar. You're going to slice and uh, peel your potato, boil it in uh, plain water until it's done. Don't salt it or anything. Uh, once you do that, you're going to take out one cup of potato, mashed potato and you're going to um, reserve the water. Make sure that you have one cup water reserved. Uh, you're going to make sure that your potatoes and your water are between 105 and 115 degrees before you incorporate the ginger, the yeast, the flour, and the sugar. Otherwise, you will kill the yeast. So make sure that you have those, uh, you know, the, the water and the mashed potatoes between 105 and 115. Um, you'll see on the table here, I have also um, gotten two tablespoons of cornmeal uh, on the table and behind me I have the cornmeal on the counter. Uh, when I'm putting the mashed potato mixture on the stove to rise, I will be uh, mixing the cornmeal uh, in the oven, drying that out. Uh, you want to get it as dry as possible. When you open up a package of cornmeal, it has a little bit of moisture in it. You're going to want to, um, while that potato mixture is rising, you can, you know, keep uh, stirring the cornmeal and drying that out as, as much as possible in the oven. Um, so while you're waiting, uh, you can uh, be drying off the cornmeal. Um, I will be dumping that two tablespoons of cornmeal back into the into the um, cornmeal mix and re uh, redoing that. I just did showed you for demonstration purposes that you need to remember to keep two uh, tablespoons set aside. Anyway, while it's in the oven, just keep on, uh, you know, keep stirring it. You don't want to get it brown. You just want to um, get off any excess moisture. Here, I've I've also made sure that the cornmeal is not uh, not hot. Um, it's it's warm though. Um, I'm going to incorporate that into the rising um, mixture of mashed potatoes, and I have set aside my two tablespoons just in case. You may or may not use all of this corn uh, meal in the uh, in the mashed potato mix. I I think it just depends on how damp your mashed potatoes are to begin with, um, and what kind of mashed potato you use. Uh, I used a big old uh, Idaho potato, um, and I didn't quite use all of the uh, corn meal. Pretty darn close, but not quite. On uh, this time, I made this um, this recipe. But anyway, you just incorporate this until you get it to the texture that you can roll this out. Uh, you're going to want to just keep mixing it um, until you can dump it on the pastry mat. Put, put that reserved cornmeal down on the pastry mat. Dump the, um, the mixture on top of it. And just uh, you're going to have to sprinkle some uh, cornmeal on top so your rolling pin doesn't stick. But roll it out to about a quarter of an inch thick. And if you don't have a pastry mat, dump it on parchment paper or wax paper. Uh, you'll find it a lot easier to be able to flip that back onto a, a lined cookie sheet. You're going to want to have it lined with parchment paper or wax paper or a sole pad. Uh, so that you can, uh, well, over the next couple of days, you're going to let this dry out. Um, you're going to have to put it back in the oven. I'll do that on part two. Um, here I'm trying to show you the consistency that you're going to need it. And see, I have uh, I have quite a bit of cornmeal left. I'm going to be incorporating that as I roll it out. Um, it's e it's a good texture to roll it out. Um, but again, I think I had uh, maybe two, three tablespoons of corn flour or cornmeal uh, left when I got the got done with this. 
Anyway, you're going to want to roll this out again a quarter of an inch thick, and we're going to be placing it on a cookie sheet to dry. Uh, I keep it in an oven with the light on, uh, and every morning and evening I rake a fork over it to uh, to break those little um, you know uh, cornmeal pieces off as it's drying. Um, but I'll do that in, in uh, part two. I don't want to drag this on and on. Um, but it is going to have to be a two-part video. Um, but you want to, um, you know, once you make this, you just as long as you have three tablespoons of uh, mixture, you can make out never-ending yeast. Uh, back to basic scale. Thanks for stopping by.